cabin, Blackie. Hmm, not very far from mine. Open the door, will you, Mary? I have my arms full of luggage. Lucky luggage. Oh, very well, Porter. Put my luggage at the foot of the bed. Oh, so now I'm a porter. I'll uh, put it uh, where you want it, Lardy. Oh, fine, fine. That will be all, Porter. At the foot of the bed, please. It's very apparent, Lardy, that you've never been to sea. We seafarers call a bed a bunk. Well, it's a lot of bed. It's a lot of bunk. Oh. oh. <laughs> Say, I should have my reservation at the last minute, too. The walls of my cabin are so close together, they practically press my pants. Well, Blanky, that's strange. This looks like a double cabin. Well, strange. It should look like a double cabin when it is a double cabin. But uh, don't think you have to sleep in both bunks just to get your money's worth. I'll remember that. Will this be a long trip? No, just overnight. We get to Westfield in the morning, and then we'll have some fun. I thought you were making this a business trip for Charlie Kingston. It is, but business for Charlie always leaves time fun. So I thought this black suitcase was too heavy to belong to you. Oh, Blackie, that isn't mine. You must have left one of mine in your cabin. Oh, this is Charlie's suitcase full of bonds. Well, I'll take it back to my cabin because you might pull the handle of it. Why shouldn't I? It's tear gas. And then... I'd cry oh, oh, for you. It would take tear gas to make you cry for anything. <laughs> well, which bunk should I sleep in tonight? The lower or the upper? I don't know. Let's see which one is softer. Hmm, the lower one's lovely. Now, let's see about the one on top. Uh, Mary, I think you'd better sleep in the lower bunk regardless. Why? It'll be a little crowded in the upper bunk. You have a cabin mate. But I don't think she'll disturb you much. She's dead. Now here's Richard Calmer's Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy, friend to those who have no friend. <laughs> Well, Blackie, no matter where you go, you find a body, don't you? Isn't it the most annoying habit, Inspector Faraday? Hurry and solve this case, will you? The ship is already 30 minutes late pulling out. So what? So are you going to Westfield with us? No, and this boat isn't going... Faraday, this is a ship. Ship, sloop, raft, canoe, or a kayak. It's not leaving this dock till I found that woman's killer. Who was, uh, that woman, Faraday? I don't know yet. You should have asked her before the coroner took her away. Why did you kill her, Blackie? Inspector, may I say something? No. Well, I will. Blackie had nothing to do with it. I was with him when he found the body. Well, that's no help to Blackie in my book. Oh, golly, Blackie, this is all my fault. If I hadn't wanted to go to Westfield with you, you wouldn't have reserved this stateroom for me. Well, don't feel badly about it, Mary. If you hadn't taken this room, we wouldn't have found the body. Faraday wouldn't be here, and we'd be missing all this fun. Blackie, look, there's a man's face in the porthole. Hey, you, what do you want? He's gone. Come on, let's go out and take and head him off. Well, that was certainly a false alarm, Miss Wesley. But, Inspector, how did I know he wasn't snooping? Well, he wasn't. The first mate said he was trying to repair a broken guy wire or something. Or something, Inspector? You should have followed that up. He told me what it was, but I don't understand this seagoing lingo. Well, let's get out of here. Just sit still, you two. The captain will be here in a minute. Oh, Blackie, what's this under the captain's chair? Something just like it on the wall in my cabin. There's one in every cabin, Mary. It's a life raft. Who are you trying to kid, Blackie? It looks like a rolled-up inner tube with a tube of toothpaste attached to it. That thing wouldn't float a midget. It'll float a couple of people, Faraday. It's a collapsible life raft. What do you have to do, unfold it and blow it up? Oh, no, Mary. Press that little button on top of that tube there, and in about two seconds you have a raft about twice as big as the top of the captain's desk and one half the size of Faraday's head. Let's press it and see what happens. No, no. Uh, now, Mary, please don't. Not oh, now. I never have any fun. Sorry to keep you waiting, Inspector Faraday. That's all right, Captain Randall. Now, who was the dead woman? Could you find out? Yes. She was Charlotte Aiken. Oh, I've heard of her. Something about money. Uh, something about two million. Look, when I want information from you two, I'll ask for it. Faraday, before this is over, you'll be begging for it. I'll beg you right now to keep quiet. Say please. Please. I said quiet. <laughs> now, Captain Randall, where did Mrs. Aiken board the ship? At Westfield, just before sailing time yesterday afternoon, with Martha Vale, her traveling companion. Where is this Martha Vale? At home. You better get me her address. I'll have to see her. Well, forgive me, Inspector, but I took the liberty of sending for her myself and asking her to come down here. 
You captains are used to running everything, aren't you? Aboard ship, yes, Inspector. I've ordered a complete passenger list for you, sir. Thanks, I'd like a copy of it. But I think I have my killer. Meaning me, of course. Why not, Blanky? There are 150 staterooms on this ship, and I find you in the one with a body in it. The one, Faraday? Well, maybe there are other staterooms equipped with bodies. Let's look. Excuse me, Inspector, but it's way past our sailing time. When can I give the order? Don't worry, Captain. In an hour's time, your ship will be at sea. Well, that's where you'll be too, Faraday. At sea and sending out an SOS for me. So help me, Blackie. So I'll help you, Faraday. Wait, don't go in there. Bob, what are you doing here? Stopping it. Hey, what's going on out there? I'll break your neck if you... Don't, Bob. Come on, let's go outside and see what this is all about. Careful, Faraday. You may get into trouble. Marshal, I'm sure you're a fool. Why do you want to get mixed up in a murder? What should I do, Hyde? It wouldn't do you any good. I'd find you. Oh. If he didn't get lost looking for you... Quiet, Blanky. Who are these people, Captain? This is Martha Vale, Mrs. Aiken's traveling companion. I don't know the man with her. Hello, Captain Randall. This is my brother, Bob. Well, this is Inspector Faraday of the police. Oh, Oh, yes. Miss Vale, were you with Mrs. Hagen on the trip she made from Westfield last night? Yes. How about you, son? No, I never traveled with Mrs. Hagen. If I could have had my way, my sister wouldn't have been traveling with that Aiken woman either. All right. Keep on talking, son. And say something when you do. I'm not so selfish that I want to be the inspector's only suspect in this murder. You? Oh, dear. Don't look so alarmed, Miss Vale. Inspector Faraday accuses me of every murder in town. I think you'd better tell oh, me everything. Oh, no, she doesn't, Blackie. She tells me. All right. She tells you, and then I figure it out for you. Quiet, Blackie. Well, now, answer a few questions for me, Miss Vale. Well, remember, Martha, by law, you needn't say any. Look, son, am I going to have trouble with you? I want my sister to know her rights. She's mixed up in this. She should see a lawyer before she answers you. And, Faraday, why don't you stop asking all the stock questions and ask the one question that really should have an interesting answer? What are you talking about, Blanky? It seems very strange to me that Miss Vale should be traveling with Mrs. Aiken and get off the ship alone, leaving Mrs. Aiken in her stateroom dead. Excuse me, Inspector Faraday. Mrs. Aiken wasn't found in her own cabin. Hers was number 85. Her body was found in 22. Hmm. That means something. Don't you wish you knew what? Oh, Blanky, darling, be quiet. All right, everybody. Into the captain's quarters for questioning. Oh, must you now? Sorry. Okay, everybody, get inside. Oh, now, look what you've done, Martha. You've got us all involved in this thing. Come in, Blackie. The man called Faraday said everybody... Now you stay here, Blackie. Faraday, are you ill? You're not going to question me? I'm going to question you, all right. Blackie, give the inspector nice answers. My very nicest. See you in the captain's quarters in a few minutes, Mary. Right. If I don't have them up in my quarters for a few years... Captain Randall, hold those people in your cabin until I'm ready for them. Of course, Inspector. Well? Well? All right, Blackie, what's this all about? You don't know, Inspector? Look, Blackie, I figured you knew something about this the minute I found you with that body. I, uh, if you didn't think so, I'd be awfully disappointed, as a matter of fact. But, uh, why don't you stop calling me names and start calling a few shots on Charlotte Aiken's death? Can you call any? Names or shots? Either. You really want to know who killed Charlotte Aiken? Well, I didn't come down here to go for a boat ride. All right, Faraday, I'll tell you all I know. Well? We went through that well routine already. I'm telling you all I know. Well, you're not saying anything. That's because I don't know anything about this case, that is. Well, I know something. The time of day, no doubt. Uh Uh-oh. There goes that gun again. And here you go again, too. I know, down to headquarters. Oh, no, wise guy. You're holding out on me. You know something about this case you're not telling. And until you talk, I'm going to put you in your cabin under guard. Well, at least you think so much of me. You want to give me police protection? Come on. On second thought, Faraday, am I being put under protection for your sake or for mine? Yes? Yes? Uh, Yes, I want something to eat. Sandwich, sir? Uh, sure, anything. Yes, sir. Sandwich. Right away. Well, what are you standing there for? I... I know who killed Mrs. Aiken. What? And I know why she was killed. Well, never mind that sandwich. Let's have this instead. Uh, better still, let's get Faraday in here first. No, no, I, I can't go to the police. I don't dare talk to you now. The cabin is being watched. I'll see you here at midnight. Oh! 
nice of you to walk around the deck a few times, Faraday. Are you sure it's no bother? I even take my dog for a walk every night. Two to one, he outsmarts you. Very funny, Blackie. I didn't think so. Here's your cabin. Take a good deep breath of air because you're in for the night. Okay, Inspector, good night. Go on, Blackie, get in there. Alone? No, I'm going in with you. No, I'd rather be alone. I'd be in better company. Now, where'll I turn on the light? I just want to make sure you're not hiding something that... Oh, Faraday, stop looking so pleased with yourself. That's not a body in my bunk. It's just a steward. Why is he lying in your bunk? Maybe he's tired. Maybe I am, too. For those half-wit remarks of yours. Well, he offered to come in here and tell me a little story entitled, Who Done It? You mean he knows who killed Mrs. Hankin? That's what he told me. Let's wake him up and hear his story. Hey, Stuart, wake up. Wake up. Shake him. Before using? Very funny. Hey, Stuart. Wake up. Wake up! I know that booming voice of yours is disturbing, Faraday, but even you can't wake our friend up. Huh? He's dead. What? Hey. Hey, I know that boy. He's done time, and plenty of it. Well, he's not going to do any more. I guess I should have expected this. Don't move, Blanky. Oh, Faraday, put away that gun. I've got you for two murders now, Blanky. And I don't put this gun away till I put you away. For keeps! <laughs> Now, back to Boston Blackie. Blackie and Mary Wesley boarded the night boat to Westfield. But the journey was upset when the body of Charlotte Aiken, wealthy widow, was found in the upper bunk of Mary Wesley's stateroom. While Inspector Parody was questioning Martha Vale, the dead woman's traveling companion, the steward of the ship came to Blackie and promised to tell him at midnight who killed Mrs. Aiken. At midnight, Blackie and Faraday found the steward dead. Faraday charged Blackie with killing him. And as we return to our story, the inspector is about to take Blackie to jail. All right, Blackie, move. Well, when I move, Faraday, I like to take my luggage with me. Okay, take the suitcases along. Thanks. Help me, will you? Okay. But knowing you, I'm going to carry the big suitcase. The little one will be no match for the big one if you start swinging it. I always said you'd make a good red cap. Uh, boy, pick up the large suitcase, please. I'll carry the small one. And no more wisecracks, wise guy. Come on. Off to you? After you. You're not getting away from me this time. Oh, no? Hey. Hey, what's that hissing noise? Tear gas. Tear gas? I thought you'd try to be a wise guy and want to carry the, <laughs> the big suitcase for your protection. This little one contains a tear gas bomb. For mine. What? Why are you carrying tear gas? Because the suitcase you're carrying contains a quarter million dollars worth of negotiable bonds. Hey! Hey! Blackie! Blackie, where are you? I'm right here, Faraday, by the door. Well, where's the door? I can't see a thing! Well, in a few seconds. You won't be able to see me either. I'm leaving. Blackie! Blackie! Come back here! Come back here or I'll kill you! Go ahead and shoot me, Faraday. I dare you! So, so help me, Blackie! I, I'll put you behind bars for this! Well, before you put me behind bars, Inspector, figure out how you're going to get out from behind this door. I'm locking it. Blackie, darling, what's the matter? Oh, Mary... Where'd you come from? Well, Captain Randall's letting us take a walk on deck. Why are you crying? Faraday just told me the nicest thing. He never wants to see me again. So let's get off the ship and make sure he doesn't. If she isn't on the train back here, then what? Then Martha Vale is smarter than we are. My brother told us she was on this train and... Oh, here she is. She's alone, too. She looks like the lone wolf type. Hello, Miss Vale. Going somewhere? Oh, I... I didn't kill Mrs. Aiken. She was alive when I left the boat. I... How do you know? Well, I... Well, I guess I don't know. We had separate cabins. I, I left the ship as soon as it docked. I had some shopping to do for Mrs. Aiken. It was very important. Then she could have been dead when you left the boat? Well, I... I, maybe she could have. 
I didn't go into her stateroom before I went ashore. She sometimes slept late. Well, tell me, did Mrs. Aiken act at all strangely on the trip from Westfield? Oh, not unless there's something strange about taking a walk in the middle of the night because you can't sleep. About what time did she go for this walk? Well, just before midnight. What time did she come back? I don't know. Well, uh, did anything strange happen last night after Mrs. Aiken went on deck? No. Think now. Oh, well, uh, just before I fell asleep, the ship slowed down a little. But it always did around that time of night on, on every trip. I tell you, I don't know anything about Mrs. Aiken's death. Now, will you please leave me alone? If you'll tell me just a little bit about your brother. Oh, I see. He didn't like the idea of your being Mrs. Aiken's companion. He wouldn't tell me. What else uh, wouldn't your brother tell you? Where he made all... I mean, nothing. You mean where he made all his money, don't you, Miss Vale? I I didn't mean anything. I I think you meant a lot. I'm getting off at the first stop, and I'm going to see him. Maybe he doesn't know more than you do, but maybe he'll say more. Mary, I found out from Robert Vale that his sister inherits Mrs. Aiken's money. What did you find out? Well, the Westfield night boat leaves Westfield at 7 in the evening and arrives here at 9 the next morning. Did the steamship company tell you where the ship would be at midnight? When it slowed down? Yeah, yeah, the clerk gave me his map. And here, he made a mark on it. The boat would be right here where the little X is. Hmm. X marks the spot, huh? But I wonder what else it marks. Well, you're the great Boston Blackie. Why don't you come out there and see? It's a good idea. Oh, Blackie, will you stop being silly? I'm dead serious. Only I'm not going to swim. We're going to trade water wings for airplane wings and fly out there. Come on. <laughs> Nice flying, buddy. We're right beside it. Is that chain hanging from the top of the boy fastened to whatever holds it into the water? Yes, I I think we... Say, wait. The chain that holds a boy in place would be underneath it, not on top of it. A chain is hanging loose, Blackie. Why don't you have a look at it? Okay, wait a minute. I'm going to climb out on the wing. Uh, now I can reach it. The... Yeah, now I have it. What is it, Blackie? Just a loose chain? Yeah, with a with a sort of a snap on it, like the one you find on the eh, end of a dog leash. So. <sighs> uh, so nothing. Okay, pilot, let's go back to the mainland. Oh, are we going up in the air again? Yes, and if I don't get a bright idea pretty soon, we'll be up in the air in more ways than one. <laughs> Speaking. Hello, Faraday. This is Blackie. All right, Blackie. Stay where you are. You're under arrest. <laughs> and you're under delusions again, Inspector. I want some information. And I want you. Nice of you to say so, pal. But listen, you knew the steward who was killed in my cabin. Uh, what did he do time for? None of your business. It's your business, though, Faraday. Tell me and I'll bring in your killer. Nothing doing. Okay, Faraday. If you don't want to solve this case, All I'm... right. But don't forget where you got the information. I don't think you'll let me. What was the steward sent up for? Smuggling. Now, is that any help to you? Probably not. You give such useless information, Faraday. So long. You listen to me, Blakey. Well, Mary, the steward was arrested for smuggling. Is that any help? No, I don't see it. Smuggling? Smuggling, yes, of course. Of course it helps. How? The chain on the boy. Smuggled goods from overseas was attached to it, then picked up by someone on the Westfield boat as it passed by. How does that explain Mrs. Aiken's death? She walked the deck of the boat last night and saw something she shouldn't have seen. That's right. The ship passes the boy at midnight, and Martha Vale said that at exactly midnight, Mrs. Aiken went for a walk on deck. Well, if Mrs. Aiken was killed last night because she went for a walk, uh, we're going to solve this murder by a walk, too. This is the way I figure it, Captain Randall. You must be good at figures, Blackie, if you can slip past the police guards on this boat and walk right into my quarters. Oh, let's not waste time with my accomplishments, Captain Randall. I'm more interested in the doings of someone on this ship. What do you mean? I think Charlotte Aiken was killed because she couldn't sleep last night. 
I have good reason to believe that this ship of yours is being used for smuggling small but highly priced articles into this country. That's absolutely fantastic. My ship goes to no foreign port. Why, we never sail, of course, more than eight miles offshore. But you pass a certain boy about eight miles offshore every night at midnight. When we're on schedule, yes. Well, here's what's been happening on your ship, Captain Randall. When it slows down as it passes that boy, someone on the lower deck reaches out with a hook or something and very neatly catches a chain dangling from the top of the boy. You know there's a chain on the top of that boy? Yes, I looked at it myself. On the end of that chain would be a package or a box or a container of some kind. Once the smuggler has that container aboard, he can bring it into the country. Yes, that's true. We don't have to pass through customs. What makes you think my ship is used for smuggling? Your steward, the one who was found dead in my cabin, was once arrested and convicted for smuggling. Mrs. Aiken was killed because she was on deck at midnight last night and saw the smuggler at work. If she was killed at sea, why wasn't her body tossed overboard? The smuggler didn't have time for that, I suppose. But he put her body where he was sure it wouldn't be found. What do you mean? The killer checked the reservations list for the return trip and found the stateroom 22 would be empty. He hid Mrs. Aiken's body there, hoping to get rid of it at sea the next night. Oh, yes. Yeah. And the reason the steward was killed was that he saw Mrs. Aiken's body being taken into the cabin and was going to tell me. Blackie, you're too smart to live. Everybody pulls a gun on Blackie. What are you smuggling, Captain? Diamonds from Africa. My partners bring them from Africa as far as the boy. I bring them the rest of the way. Just stand where you are. I just want to get a little closer to you so when you shoot, you won't miss. I won't miss. Then I'll dump your body overboard. Well, when you do, will you throw this collapsible life raft in after me? This one under your chair looks like a big Don't one. Don't touch that. I won't touch the raft, Captain. Only the inflation valve. Hey! Hey! hey. hey. You look awfully silly on the Don't floor, Captain. I'll kill you for this, Blackie. Uh, how are you going to kill me after I get this gun out of your hand? Let go! Let go of me! After you drop that gun. You're breaking my... All right, I've got it. Okay, Randall. Get up. I have a gun of my own. Don't shoot. Don't worry. Say, isn't it funny how a little air in this life raft took the wind out of your sails? Twenty-one, twenty-two. Here's my cabin again, Blackie. Open the door, will you, Mary? I've got my arms full of luggage. Lucky luggage? Oh, I said that before, didn't I? <laughs> I liked it just as much the second time. <laughs> oh, um, very well, Porter. Just put my luggage at the foot of the bed. <laughs> Blackie, will we get to Westfield this time? <laughs> I don't know. I can't guarantee anything. Well, um, do you think we dare look in the upper bed? I, I mean, uh, a bunk. I don't know. You look. No, maybe you'd better look. I'd rather you look. Well, if you'll remember, uh, last time I looked, we found a body up there. Oh, yes, that's right. All right. I'll look. Blackie! What, Mary? What is it? Believe it or not, there isn't a body up there. 